I'm Lindsay, and for the past year, I've been working tirelessly on my van, a 2013 Chevy Express, in preparation for my first big trip across the country this summer. But as the deadline for my trip gets closer, the pressure to finish the build is greater than ever. So follow me as I build out my van with the hopes of eventually achieving my goal of visiting every national park here in the United States. Well, it's been a while since I've broken out this hat, mainly because it's been too cold for baseball caps, but now that it's finally spring here in New England and I'm about to start wiring up the electrical system in my van, it feels like this hat has never really been more appropriate um, because I truly do not know what I am doing. Before I move on to potentially electrocuting myself, I have a confession to make. So when I was down in Florida at my mom's place, the van totally died, um, just like right in the driveway. So I called AAA to come replace the battery, considering I had been having problems with it for a few months at that point anyways. Um, and I also did not want to pay for a tow. They did the replacement. They gave me this battery and uh, for about a week, it was totally fine. I made it home okay. And then the problems started again. And actually they were worse than ever before. Um, and so after a few weeks of consistent issues trying to start my van up, I took it to my mechanic to see what the hell was up. So they ran a test on this battery and determined that it was basically expired and it also had only about a third of the cold cranking amps needed to start my van. Cold cranking amps are basically a measurement of the battery's ability to start an engine in cold temperatures. So because I live in Massachusetts and not Florida, that matters a hell of a lot more up here. So I have the van back from the shop with a new AC Delco battery in, and now I'm just waiting on a refund check from AAA after calling them to bitch about the fact that I spent $176 on a battery that doesn't work. Well, even though I got my money back, this kind of thing is just one of the many setbacks that have prevented me from making progress as fast as I would like. But now that my battery problems are finally fixed, it's time to move on to building my electrical system. Nice. I'll be honest though, I had been procrastinating on researching this in particular because it was very intimidating and potentially a little dangerous. I know I would have figured something out eventually, both with the help of my dad and likely watching dozens of YouTube videos, but it would have taken a really long time and that's time I don't necessarily have. When a viewer who just so happens to be an electrical engineer reached out to me offering help with figuring out an off-grid system and also ensuring that I don't electrocute myself or start a fire in the process, I really couldn't believe how lucky I was. Like, I don't, 
I don't want to understate this. I feel insanely lucky. Um, shout out, you know who you are. Thank you. <laughs> Up until now, the most intense electrical work I had ever done is constantly jumping the van battery, so he definitely had his work cut out for him, to say the least. But after an extremely helpful crash course in batteries and wiring from my new friend, I think I should be able to put together my own electrical system a lot faster than I originally thought. When thinking about your electrical system, you basically want to work backwards. So ideally you would start by making a list of everything you plan to install or charge in your van and then calculate the total wattage of all of those items. This is every electrical item I plan to have in my van, both wired to the 12 volt direct current and things that charge up from the 120 volt alternating current. So things like my laptop or like these little camera chargers and batteries, those won't be permanently wired into the van, obviously, but they will be drawing power whenever they're plugged into the 120 volt wall outlet. There's usually something on your electronics that indicates the wattage or the voltage and amperage, which you can use to calculate the total wattage. For stuff like this drone battery, my laptop, or my camera charger, I'd look at the wattage on the power adapter and then multiply that by the number of hours it takes for that item to fully charge. You basically want to give yourself a lot of wiggle room here um, because these items are charging off of the 120 volts alternating current. Uh, those wall outlets are being like powered through the inverter in the battery and that inverter is not going to be 100% efficient. You're not going to get one-to-one -one battery uh, life to inverted AC output. Like my friend told me it would probably be about 85% efficiency. So putting that in the calculation as well to stay extra safe, you would calculate the wattage on the power adapter of whatever item you have, multiply that by the number of hours it takes to fully charge, and then also probably multiply that by 1.15 to account for the uh, loss of potential uh, energy there. So I sound like I know what I'm talking about for some reason. Yikes. I, my friend fact checked this, so it is actually correct. With this list, I then had to look up all the specs of each and every item, did all my calculations as to how much power they would draw, and then added them all up to estimate how much power I could get away with using before draining my battery. Then ideally, I would just buy a battery with the appropriate capacity based on that information, but I didn't do that because at the time I didn't know any better. So this is the battery that will basically power everything in my van. This is my house battery, a Blue Eddy EB150 1000 watt power station. It's a bit of a dumbed down solution to having a more legit battery setup as it houses the battery itself, a solar charge controller, and an inverter. An inverter basically converts the direct 12 volt current from your battery to a 120 volt alternating current, which is what a standard household outlet uses. The battery in here is capable of holding 1500 watt hours or 125 amps at 12 volts, which should be just fine for my purposes as seen in my calculations earlier. But when I inevitably have to recharge it, I have a few options. Especially since this battery actually also has its own built-in maximum power point tracking charge controller, which essentially optimizes the efficiency of your solar panels if you choose to have them. And speaking of solar panels, uh, when people build the electrical system in their vans, they'll charge the house batteries from at least one of three sources. The sun, the van, or the wall. 
So when I say the wall, I mean a standard electrical outlet like you would find in a house, or more likely at a campground where they have electrical hookups. Charging this way could be as simple as taking the battery out of the van entirely and then plugging it in. But some people have what's called an AC pass-through inlet, which is basically a, a plug in the side of your van. So you are literally just plugging your van in to charge your battery up. There's also the option to charge your batteries using the van itself by wiring up the alternator to a DC-DC converter, which basically isolates the house and van electrical systems. This both ensures you don't end up draining your vehicle battery and stranding yourself, and also prevents the alternator from being overwhelmed when charging up high-powered lithium batteries like the one that I have. And since I will probably be driving for hours on end before stopping somewhere to camp, it's a pretty obvious solution to charge the batteries up while I drive. And finally, there are solar panels, which are a popular choice because once you get them set up, it's basically just free unlimited energy. I was so sure I would not need solar panels at first. I think I was a little reluctant to set them up because I didn't feel like putting any more holes in my roof. But after thinking about it a little bit and all the potential scenarios, like having the ability to park at an off-grid site for multiple days, I was convinced. So I'll be wiring up a system that can actually charge off of all three of those power sources. So let's get started. So the first real step for the electrical system is figuring out uh, the placement of all the hardware. But before I like build a cabinet or anything like that, I actually feel like I should attach this part of my bed frame. Um, First, because uh, I want to make sure that I'm able to make the cabinet large enough without accidentally getting into the space where I mean to put the bed. think you can eyeball it, you can't. You have to have a level. Thank no, you, you don't. Very much. Not for this. <laughs> Not, Not for that. Levels are irrelevant in my yeah, world. That's true. I can't believe uh, I've kind of got part of the bed planned out. Um, I've been really anxious about that for quite a while, so this sort of calms me down just a little bit. So it isn't like fully bolted in or secured, but um, at least I have a plan now. That's like, it's more than I had before. And uh, I have the reference points to start working on the electrical cabinet. Also, I think I can finally tear up some of this blue tape that's been on my floor forever um, to mark the layout because the bed's kind of in now. So 
So, I won't lie to you, this cabinet is painfully not square or level, but it is pretty solid. Um, you know, it's not going anywhere, it supports weight, um, so that's good enough for me. And I've also made this little divider down here for my battery so that when I'm driving, it uh, isn't able to tip over and smash everything inside the cabinet. Um, this plywood panel here is actually going to serve as one of the sides of my cabinet um, on the front here, but more importantly, it's where I'm going to mount all of my electrical hardware to make sure that everything is ready to go once um, I have all the relevant parts to wire everything up. So basically I have a few decisions to make, like figuring out where I'm going to put these light switches or the fuse panel or like these USB charging ports. So I'm going to do some decision making now. Okay, all the hardware is mounted, which means it's time for some scary shit. Actually wiring it all up. And because I am planning to charge off of all three potential power sources, I actually have to start by wiring the battery charging input to this rotary switch here, which will allow me to choose which of the three sources I want to charge off of. So. One for shore power, two for alternator, and three for solar. As necessary as this thing is, goddamn, it is causing me a lot of problems. <laughs> The first problem that I came across was that um, the insulated crimp connectors I had didn't actually fit inside these little slots, so I had to get some slightly different partially insulated crimp connectors, um, which also didn't quite fit in the slots, so every time I use one I remove this little silver um, bar across the end of the connector and that allows it to slide in place underneath the screw head so I can actually secure it down into the switch. Now that that's fixed, um, I also have a slight issue with the way this thing screws in. Like, if I want to screw this into my cabinet, like, how am I supposed to fit this through a, a cavity, through a hole, and also have wood remaining on the side to actually screw it into? So what I'm thinking of doing, because I've already cut a hole that's like too big, um, is basically just placing this little like plate on top of the side of the cabinet and having this in there. Um, I'll have to like take apart um, the front of this so I can just kind of like put the, I genuinely don't really know, but I'm gonna have to figure that out too. Okay, so this is the cable that charges the Blue Eddy itself. I have separated this positive and negative strands here. Um, the negative strand just goes directly up into the switch here, 
whereas the positive strand um, actually goes here to this fuse block. There's a 10 amp fuse in there, and then I have spliced an additional length of wire that reaches uh, the other end of the fuse block, goes up, and into the top of the switch. So, um, I guess now that that's finally taken care of, um, I am able to wire up each of the individual power inputs. So, like I mentioned before, the sun, the van, and the wall. The first step is installing the shore power, which will allow me to just run an extension cord from any old wall outlet and plug it in the outside of my van. So in order to do that, I have to install this AC pass-through inlet, which means that I have to drill a big hole in the side of my van. God damn it. finish wiring the AC inlet power to the rotary switch, I had to configure the battery charger's output in the Victron app. All I had to do was set it to the same voltage as outlined in my wiring diagrams, and then I could finish plugging everything in. Okay, so I'm gonna test the AC pass-through now and see if it's able to charge my battery. on. Not charging. Let's see if we can switch this. Oh my god, I was so disappointed and then I realized I, <laughs> I didn't have the input plugged into the actual battery. Okay, input. We've got the switch. Oh boy, oh boy. So that was a whole thing, um, but I just got off a call with my friend who, based on what I was telling him, said it sounded a little like the terminals in, once again, the rotary switch, just messing everything up. Um, the terminals in there weren't in the right place. Um, so even though I followed the plans, um, like the uh, like different ends weren't corresponding in the way that he initially thought they would. So he was like, all right, you're gonna have to do a little bit of testing uh, of the resistance between um, terminals on the switch. Um, so I used my multimeter, checked it out, and I figured out that one of the wires was in the wrong place. So now I have power. My next step is wiring up the alternator, which thankfully is the one power source that doesn't involve drilling into the exterior metal of my van, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy either. putting my insulation in up here before doing the wiring. A little bit. So even though it's not as scary as throwing the solar panels on the roof or drilling a hole in the side of the van. Um, this is technically the most complicated uh, step in terms of wiring because it requires me to kind of like tap into the existing electrical system of the van itself. So 
I ran a bunch of wires up and down the length of the van so that I have a positive wire going to the fuse box under the driver's seat and a negative wire going all the way back to the chassis ground screw. Um, so basically like I have a completed connection um, to the length of the van's electrical system. Again, it's not like I made this up, like these are just the plans that were given to me. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Give me some. <laughs> so with that said, now that I've reached the step of the alternator, um, I need to show you this, uh, which is the world's most satisfying toggle switch, but it is also the switch that I will use to turn the converter on and off. Um, in order to prevent it from draining my actual car battery um, when I'm like stationary. So um, I've basically got to figure out where to put this in the cab of the van. I'm kind of thinking the most accessible place for me will be like up here um, because I'm able to just like, I think maybe drill a hole and just snake my wires through the headliner and fish it out. Um, I. I'm reluctant to drill into the headliner, but I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, that is satisfying as hell. So now that my switch is up there, I am going to connect the wires at the other end of it to the fuse box underneath the driver's seat. So I've run the positive wire to the always hot uh, bolts connection under the driver's seat here. And now I have my fuse doubler, which I will now plug into one of the like auxiliary items uh, in the fuse panel. So something like my HVAC or something like that. That's actually what I plan to do. So if I look on the guide here, I can see that the HVAC control is 10 amps. That's actually important because I don't want to overload um, the doubler. Uh, this can only take 20 amps max, I want to say. So don't want to overload that. So pick something nice and low. I've got my HVAC control. It looks like it's at F25 down there. So I've got to do a little bit of like orientation matching, like it's a box of chocolates. But I figured out that it is this fuse right here, the red one all the way to the left. Okay, I just um, reconnected the car battery, did short testing everywhere I could think to do it. And I think I'm ready to give this a shot and turn it on. So I just spent a couple of very, like, sweaty, panicked minutes trying to test all of the connections and figure out why I wasn't getting voltage in places and I texted my friend and asked like do you know what issue might be and uh, eventually we got there I forgot to put a second fuse in the fuse doubler bro I'm tired <laughs> So 
so unfortunately it doesn't actually charge my Blue Eddy battery um, because I think the output on this converter is not strong enough so um, I may have to get a slightly different model but I'm not too worried about that because honestly the hard part is done um, wiring everything properly under the driver's seat um, literally took me two days um, so now I'm going to hopefully go inside so I can stop being so sweaty and I'll um, figure out what to do with the, uh, the converter issue tomorrow. So, um, I actually broke my multimeter, um, had to go and buy a new one. Uh, I fried the old one somehow uh, by doing something stupid, probably. Um, and so, got a new one so that I can test the output on the converter and see uh, for sure if that's the problem. Well, it kind of looks like um, my suspicion was right. Uh, it's not like even my suspicion. I did not come to this conclusion on my own. I have been doing so much texting um, with my electrical engineer friend, but um, it turns out the converter he suggested, he knew it was just gonna be on the cusp, um, but the output isn't strong enough to trigger the Blue Eddy uh, to start charging. It needs like 15, 16 volts, and unfortunately, uh, you just saw the output there was just under 15. So, um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to get a slightly different model of converter, and um, luckily, like I said, the hard part's done, so I'll just pop all the new wires in when that gets here and try it one more time. Take two on this slightly different converter model. Um, it really does look almost identical, but the output on this one is 20 to 30 volts. So that should get me where I need to go. All right, I've reconnected all the wires and inputs to the new converter. I'm gonna see if that changes things. Lights on. What did I do? Okay, I don't know what the fuck is up at the Victron factory, but um, <laughs> this right here, this is uh, the remote wire, and it is labeled positive and negative. But as you can see, the positive wire is going into the negative terminal. Now, if I turn on the car, it fucking works. Um, thanks for nothing, I guess, but I am so insanely happy this works. Um, now let me just show you. Plug that in. Here it is, charging. I'm so fucking excited. I've been really struggling with this shit. I think it's taken me like four or five days to figure it out, but... I got there, and now I'm just gonna screw this back into the cabinet. Well, my next step is a really big one because I'm finally going to mount my solar panel. This is a 200 watt monocrystalline solar panel from Renogy, um, and I plan to put it on the roof of my van right near the front. So I guess I can finally open this box up and take stock of what's inside. It feels crazy to me, but this is really all I need to complete the install. I have these two cables for the solar panel itself um, that will be fed through this RV cable gland that goes on the roof. 
um, and the panels themselves uh, have these little brackets that I have to buy separately uh, to attach to the panel, to attach the panel to the roof. So part of me feels like I could get this done today and I'm really hoping that turns out to be true. Well, that was not very graceful, um, but it's up here. So uh, I just wanted to figure out like where it would actually fit, like how it would work. Um, I'm thinking it really does make the most sense this way. It, it feels awkward, it feels weird, but like, yeah, I don't know, like where else am I gonna put it? Um, the one issue that I'm kind of running into is that these little um, holes here, are lined up with the ribs of the van in such a way that it makes it very awkward to drill into. So I'm thinking I might sort of like do something similar to what I did with the fan and build up those channels with some butyl tape um, before I actually screw down into uh, the van itself. So um, now I'm on to figuring out the actual wires uh, and then I can make it all permanent, I guess. I'm embarrassed to admit just how long it took me to figure out how to like properly feed these wires through the cable gland. Um, but finally figured it out. So I think it's time to fill some holes in the roof. plug is in so I guess I'm gonna see if the solar wiring actually works now Now that I have all three power sources installed, um, I'm pretty thrilled because this is basically the last step I have to do before I can move on to all of the exciting shit, like putting on walls and a ceiling. Um, but basically, now that that's working, I am able to run my battery's output using this um, cigarette lighter attachment going to my fuse box, which will then um, power any of the direct current items that are in the walls of my van, like this fan or my lights. <sighs> this should be easy, but I really hope I don't regret saying that later. So I can't totally finish wiring up the lights yet because I have to do that at the same time as I install my ceiling, but if you saw the video where I installed this fan, you know that I've been waiting 
a really long time for this. Hell yeah, it feels really good. For something that I was afraid to even think about just a few months ago, it's sort of wild that the electrical system ended up being one of the most rewarding and sort of even relaxing, sometimes, parts of the build yet. I'm infinitely thankful for the help that I had, and I hope that this video can be at least a little bit helpful to people like myself, because I just had no idea where to even start with this kind of thing. Well, now that all the wiring is finished, I've been told things are about to go faster than ever. And honestly, they kind of have to at this point. I only have six weeks to finish this build before I leave on a month long trip. One that will take me over 5,000 miles and through six national parks with a very specific destination in Montana that you'll hear more about later. And as excited as I am for that, I'm equally anxious about finishing in time. But part of me feels like one way or the other, the build will be over before I know it. <laughs> 